Namaste, welcome to Kaivalya Yoga Gurukulam and the KYG Shrine. So in this series of the KYG Shrine, we were talking about the Kaivalya Lingam. We'll take each of this and, and explore as to what is the meaning of the number four that is associated with the Brahma base. What is the number eight uh, or the eight aspects of the Vishnu energy? And what are the 16 aspects of the Rudra energy? So let's start with the Brahma base. So the Brahma base is four. We are looking at the base of the Lingam here. The number four represents, it could represent anything from the four directions to the four Purusharthas and so on. But what I am sharing you is what I have made peace with, so bear with me. Because we are talking of creation, the beginning of creation. Where does creation begin? It's not a historical thing, but it is, a, it is in the present that creation happens. In the perfect moment that the creation happens. Creation comes from sound energy, which is in the Akasha. And therefore, Akasha is the most subtle of the five elements. And from there, from the sound, creation comes. The, the, the Bible says, first there was a word, the word was God, and the word became flesh. And similarly, in our uh, Sanatana Dharma, we talk of the Om, that is the beginning of creation. So sound is the energy. So Brahma is related to sound. Now, what are the four aspects of sound? The four parts of sound are Para, Pashyanti, Madhyama, and Vaikhari. This is mentioned in our scriptures and these are some of the most powerful elements of creation. So that is what determines the four. So para. Para comes on this side of the lingam. The Sadyo Jatam side. This is the western side facing west. This is where para comes. Because the linga is facing east, para is something you can't see and therefore it is at the back of the lingam. So para. Para comes from here. And we'll explore this in a bit. Pashyanti. Pashyanti comes from here. The thoughts, the emotions that begin to form from that para state, from that unconscious, subconscious, from the depths of the chitta, a sound manifests itself. And it comes in the form of thoughts and emotions that come this side. The one facing north, the Vamadeva side. So Sadhyojatam, Vamadeva. These are the five faces of the Shiva energy, which is the oneness energy. It's the five faces. So, we have the Sadhyo Jatam, that is where the Para is. The Vamadeva, the northern part, is where the Pashyanti is. And then the Madhyama comes on the side facing the south. In that side, it's called the Madhyama. So from the thoughts and emotions, a little whisper begins to happen in our consciousness. So that happens here in Madhyama. And finally, Vaikari. Vaikari is that you can all see, we can all see, and that is a manifested word. The word that I'm speaking right now, that is Vaikari. When it was just being whispered and I was murmuring perhaps to myself, that is Madhyama. When it came as instinctive, intuitive thoughts, it was Pashyanti. But from the very depths of my unconscious and subconscious, where the knowledge came, which finally formed into words here, that is Para. So Para, Pashyanti, Madhyama and Vaikari. These are the four forms of sound which the Brahma energy releases in our consciousness. So we had Para, Pashyanti, Madhyama and Vaikari. These can correlate also with the four Purusharthas of life, the four, the four broad parameters of life within which the creative energies begin to flow. What are those four Purusharthas? The four goals, if you will, which is popularly designed, but I don't necessarily agree with the four goals as such. But these are the four pillars which, which guide our lives, which shape our lives. So, and that also stems from the Brahma energy. So what are they? One is Moksha, right? Moksha is the final state of Nirvana, liberation. That's why you and I are here. The very fact that we are here is we are looking for that, our, our inner being is searching for that ultimate state of unending bliss, a state of peace, serenity and permanency, if there is a term like that, permanency. 
Uh, that's why we look for uh, happiness in senses, we look for movies, entertainment and movies. We are searching for happiness, we are searching for that eternal state. That is moksha. Where is moksha? Moksha is linked with the para state, at the back, facing the west. Why? Because moksha is such a subtle thing. You and I can talk about it for hours without knowing anything about it, right? So that is the moksha. Moksha is there, linked with para, at the back, in the sadhyo jasa, part of the Shiva Lingam. Then you have dharma. Dharma is something related to right actions, what is seen in the world. Who is this guy? How do you know a person? How do you like a person or dislike a person or whatever it is? Uh, I, I'm not talking of judgment necessarily, but basically how do, you, uh, how do you study a personality or a character based by his actions, his words, his all of that. So that is the dharma. Right? We study of the Sri Rama's life, we study Krishna's life, we study just life of Jesus Christ, we study the life and teachings of Muhammad. All of them are based on the dharma that they practice, the dharma that they taught. Dharma is something that is seen in the world. Dharma is right here. It is the Vaikhari part of the speech. So dharma. Artha, artha is wealth. Artha is the abundance. Artha, artha is the resources that are available to us. That is in the Madhyama position. Madhyama also means uh, equanimity, a sense of uh, 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 control, if you will, Madhyama. Not too much, not too less. A, a sense of balance, a sense of harmony is in that word Madhyama. So Madhyama, that is a vak, is related to Artha. Artha is that side. So not too much of resources, not too little of resources. We need enough resources to meet our goals in life because our ultimate goal is moksha. So we need resources. Resources can be money, resources can be property, a roof over our head, simple clothes to wear. And that is the kind of resources we are seeking. So you have dharma and um, artha. Then comes, there is moksha on that side, but what's the fourth purushartha? This one facing north is kama. Karma is desires, karma is wishing, um, seeking, so desires is a word. Dharma, Artha, Karma and Moksha. In the previous vlog that you did, we talked about water flowing down on the Linga and flowing towards the north, facing the north. This part is always to face the north. So north is Sasrara. So the desire is on the northern side, which means all our desires, all our wishes should be focused in the ultimate aim here. That will ultimately lead us to moksha. So the four goals of life or the four pillars within which we live our lives are dharma, artha, kama and moksha. Para, pasyanti, madhyama and vaikari. These are the four parts of the Brahma base. So this is where the creative energy blossoms and this is where we begin to form the basis of our lives. My dear brothers and sisters, on the one side this is theoretical, but on the other side this is actually very practical and we need to focus on the practical part. So how do we relate this to our lives? This is important for us to understand. Pay attention to the sound energy in your lives. Please, please, please remember that is where your reality begins. If you are not happy with where you are at this point in life, if there is some disturbance in your life, whatever it is, somebody next to you is, is not feeling well or you are not feeling well or there is a relationship issue, there is a financial issue or there is a dissatisfaction with your career, whatever it is around you, your creation, your life, if that environment is not where you want to be, where did that come from? Not some god who was upset with you, not some planets who are misaligned. That is a different aspect where those energies are very less important. The most important and powerful energy is the energy of sound that has begun in your own conscious and subconscious mind from where you and I create this reality. So don't blame a God outside you, don't blame the planets outside you, don't seek solutions outside of yourself. Don't look for gurus who will somehow magically take you away from that uh, difficult path and somehow place you in that golden position. It just doesn't happen that way. If the inner sound is weak, if the inner space where sound originates is polluted, is, is full of commotion, what does that mean? 
Watch the sounds that go into your body through the ears. Watch the quality of sound. What is the quality of sounds? I just listen to anything that comes on my phone. There is there's music. Okay, I enjoy music. The next second, there is some news. Oh, yeah, yeah, there is news. Somebody is, you know, speaking very violently and evoking my emotions. Oh, yeah, I'm also getting angry listening to that. So I'm constantly in this crazy aspects of sounds. Okay? Is that my life? You need to ask yourself that question. What is the quality of sounds? There is no good and bad sounds. But if sounds are disturbing to me and I'm okay with it, then remember that disturbance is going to manifest as external disturbance in your life. There cannot be any other truth than this. I have to make peace with the sounds that's coming into my body. Deep peace. So because those become the seeds from which my reality emerges. Watch the sounds coming into you. What, who are these people that are walking into your home? You have to pay attention to that. My television shows that I watch, the conversations that I listen to. What is the quality? And then, what is the quality of sound that leaves my mouth? What is the kind of sound? Not only the volume, is it too much? Too much words where there is no, I just start talking and I don't know where it is going. It is going on and on and on and on and on. And so what is the quality of that conversation? Is there, is there um, beauty in that conversation? Is there a necessity in that conversation? Is there a negativity in that conversation? Is there a positivity in that conversation? When I become more conscious, more mindful of the sounds that are going out of my mouth into somebody else's inner space, when I'm conscious of the sounds that are entering through my ears into my inner space, then I am shaping and allowing a very powerful, pure, pristine, serene, powerful Brahma energy to manifest. And that manifestation will eventually come and form in our lives as what we see around. We will explore the Vishnu energy in a separate vlog, but for now, Focus on the four kinds of sounds, the para, that is in the deep unconscious state, that is a result of all the sounds that I have listened to and I have spoken and all the sound energy that has gone into my system goes into the para state, the unmanifested, it goes deep into my unconscious and from there comes pashyanti, thought forms, intuitive energy, knowledge, feelings, emotions, madhyama, then I begin to whisper them form them into pristine thoughts and clear thoughts, thought patterns emerge, a personality emerges, all that is Madhyama. Because somebody says, who am I? I say, I am happy, I am sad, all of this is that Madhyama, that, that image I carry with myself. And then finally, Vaikhari, what I speak, what manifests out of my mouth, that is the Vaikhari, the manifested sound. These are the same things that help us in the four pillars of our life, Dharma, the sense of righteousness, artha, what are my resources that are available, how do I get those resources, am I focusing too much on those resources at the cost of dharma? I need to ask myself, you need to ask yourself, dharma, artha, kama, what are my desires, where are they leading me? Is there a direction to my desires? Is there a reason for these desires to be followed? Dharma, artha, kama, and finally, moksha. Is that moksha, even in my consciousness at some point, even if I say it's a distant thing, is that even something that I think of on an everyday basis? And if I'm thinking of that, how am I focusing on achieving that? That is the energy of the Brahma base. As always, thank you so much for watching. Stay blessed, stay inspired. Let's continue this learning in future vlogs. Thank you. Namaste. Namah Shivaya